take the car to the dyno and test out how that wastegate did. much flatter we can you know continue to refine boost control so it stays even and it'll just stay flat all the way across the red line. Yeah. I think and then we can start putting some timing to getting it. Getting that dip out of there is huge. Yeah. <clears throat> Keep cranking that LP up. Run a whole nother two turns? Yeah, I don't think it's doing anything. So I had showed you guys before, on the previous dyno that we were at, um, we had a major dip in the torque curve. You could see it climb and then kind of dip off and then make a second run almost within one pull. And that, you couldn't really feel it too much on the street, but it was definitely noticeable. So one thing we were hoping was with this new actuator, we were able to get rid of that. And if you see the dyno on the graph here, you can see that it holds boost the entire way. It doesn't go up from like 20 PSI down to like 
14, 15 PSI and then shoot back up to say 25, 30. Um, we were able to dial this guy in about 35 PSI and ramp right up to 35 PSI and hold it steady. Um, the torque curve you can see on that dyno sheet just from this most recent one was much better for what we want to see. Um, it's better boost control, simple as that. So you can see the peak numbers aren't exactly um, what you guys might expect for about 34, 35 pounds of steady boost all the way through the rev range. What I am pretty sure is happening is I think I have a boost leak between the low pressure turbo and high pressure turbo. Um, so that 35 pounds you're seeing is most likely all coming from that small turbo. Um, it was around, you know, high 400, mid 400 horsepower at 35 pounds and you know, even at this high at 20 pounds should be much greater than that. So we're pretty sure that that's exactly what's happening. We're only getting maybe say one pound of boost out of this guy and back in the, the EFR is doing all the work. So we'll definitely have to check that out. Um, if maybe I'll have to redo some of the piping uh, to or redo some of the gaskets here. I don't really like I don't really like how Borg Warner does this. Um, it's like a V-band style flange, but it's got an O-ring in it. Um, there's just a lot of things I could do better on this setup. I know if I did it again, so I, I don't know how much I'll redo or or if I'll redo any of it. But we'll have to see uh, what the winter holds. One other issue that we found on the dyno, and pretty much why we stopped for the day, was that on the higher end of the rev range and the higher boost levels, we were seeing the injector duty cycle spike to like 96, 97 percent duty cycle, which is way more than you really want to run safely. Um, we weren't having any issues going lean, but it's a possibility. Um, and the cause of that was running out of methanol pump. So I have a Bosch uh, 044 in the back, just a single one, and methanol takes like four times as much fuel as gasoline for the same power level. Um, so the issue is I don't think I'm able to pump enough methanol to supply as much as we need for those injectors. Um, so that's going to be a major upgrade that needs to come in the future. Um, you will definitely see that this winter because we do want to make more boost, we want to make more uh, power. And if we are running out of pump already, it's kind of dangerous as is. So. I'm not going to take a risk with fuel, that's the last thing you want to take a risk with is, is not having enough fuel for the power level you want to make. Hey thanks for watching, so subscribe to the channel now if you want to see more videos. Uh, also check out some of my older footage and more of the build itself and you can uh, follow along with where it's going uh, in the future. Give it a big thumbs up, leave a comment if you have any input, anything you'd like to see, any more information you want to know in the car um, and there will be lots more to come. So. Thanks again, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys next time.